And I think, Chuck, one of your claims in the book, the second half of the book, is essentially that, um, you know, regardless of the particular legal rules that someone adopts, you're ultimately going to get to this place of constraint. Um, that it's not going to really matter any you know, what the what the initial in, uh, set of entitlements is because you're going to get there in the end, um, and that's. It has a long academic pedigree. It's the Coase theorem, essentially. Doesn't matter what you set the entitlement, people will just bargain, and it's ultimately transaction costs. It's Jane Jacobs um, in, in urban planning that communities kind of spontaneously organize and will get to the right result eventually. But I think that the Coase point is that the transaction costs for how you get there matter. And um, when the administration took some fairly aggressive stands, on things like the things I mentioned, I think it did lead to an overreaction and, and a problem. So I think about the leaks, and I think about uh, Dana's amazing reporting um, in 2005 on ghost prisons, and you compare it to the 2010 series on, uh, that is mentioned in your book um, on, the, uh, ta on the national security establishment. There's just a whole bunch more information, a whole bunch more leaks that are happening in 2005, um, and more significant ones, it seems to me, but, but maybe I'm wrong. We have the expert here. Um, I do think that when the process is not followed, that the Constitution sets out, and when agencies are cut out, when, when branches of government are cut out, there's more of an incentive, and I do think this is wrong. I think this is a horrible thing in our government that we have these leaks, but you're going to have more of them when the process isn't followed, when people feel that their voice isn't heard. And so I think you actually get a zigzag form of checks and balances that isn't optimal, rather than lacing the constraints into the system from the start. 